Hey guys, it's good to see you back. Previously, I painted the engine block. On this one, I'm going to be installing freeze plugs, thread chasing holes, and seeing if those piston rings will fit that came with pistons. We'll see how it goes. They may not fit, we'll see. Depends on what the clearance is going to be. So stay tuned. We'll find out soon. So the next thing we're going to do is install the new freeze plugs. I got a kit of them and I'm not really used to ones with this much of a sidewall, but uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to show you the sidewall here. This is what I'm normally used to. This was what was in the engine and this is what they gave me. They gave me two of these and a bunch of these. I'm going to probably use these thick walled ones for here and here and the other places. But for this one, I'm going to use a thin wall one since there is that ridge in there. So the way you would install these is I went and got some aviation liquid sealant. Basically, make a gasket, form a gasket. Permatex looks like the part number is 80019. This stuff works really good with freeze plugs. So, when you open these things up, there's going to be a little brush in here. So, try to get the excess off the stem here. And you just want a dab of this. And we're going to come in here and we're going to put it around the edge. Put a liberal coating, not dripping, but you want enough to be able to seal. There we go. And we're this one we're going to use a small wall. And what I like to use as a punch is a 27 millimeter. Fits right in there perfectly. And you want to put it down in there. Try to get it square. There we go. And basically just start driving. The thing is, when you're driving these things, You'll see a little bevel on the edge of the surface. You just want this edge to go to basically meet where the bevel ends. You don't want to drive this thing all the way through. So let's get going here. Nice light taps. Check your work. Looks like I need to go down a little farther. All right, almost there. And that looks good right there. Let me get you a little bit closer. So you see this bevel right here? You want it just under that. You want it to be flat against that bevel. Let me move you back a little bit. So you can see the bevel and the edge of that freeze plug. That right there is a good install of this freeze plug. So the one thing I will note is these freeze plugs are different sizes. You have a one and three quarter here, one and three quarter here, and one and a half here. This is the only one on this side, but there is one on the other side of this engine. All the rest are one and three quarter. So I will continue installing these and let's get right to it.
for this freeze plug, instead of using a 27 millimeter, this one's going to be a 24 millimeter. And that's the full install of freeze plugs. There are a few on the back that I do need to install, but I'll do that once I take the engine off of the engine stand. One thing I will say, you might want to know why you need to get it underneath the bevel. The reason why is these are actually tapered. So they actually go in like this and then they push against the side once you start driving these in. If you have a little bit sticking out, what will actually happen over time is this thing will actually walk out of here just because it, it has space to move. Um, that's why you want the edge on the inside of this wall here. That way it can't walk out. It's pushing the farthest point is pushing on the inside of this wall. So it's not going to go anywhere once it's down this far. So this tool here is called a tap. Basically, it's made for making threads inside metal or plastic, whatever you have. It's got a little square bit on the end of it, and it fits inside this little socket here. It's specially made for it. And you could either put it on a ratchet or a power tool. For this application, I am actually going to use a power tool because I'm fairly comfortable with doing this because I've done it so many times. But I would definitely recommend starting out with a hand tool for this just because it's so easy to cross thread. But the reason I'm doing this is to clean up the threads inside those holes because rust will build up. Some vehicles use one bolt hole versus another. You just never know what the different applications. So I'm just going to do every single hole on this block to make it easier to put bolts in.
next thing we're going to do is check our ring gap inside this cylinder. This is a very important clearance to check because if your ring end gap is too small, as this thing is running, that heat is building up and these things are expanding on you. So if it's too tight, it'll actually start touching and it'll push it out and start and make this so it binds up in here and it'll start storing this, could break a piston if it's bad enough. We don't want that to happen. If it's too large, what will happen is some of that compression will leak past there and you'll start getting blow by past your piston in here and you could start uh, using oil. It'll start burning oil on it. So that's why it's very important to check. These things, when they come packaged, they will say second groove, third groove. This one says third groove. And this one is top groove. Very important to keep those in line because the thickness of them is different from others. So you want to make sure that you're putting them in the right groove. One thing to be aware of is when you get piston rings, sometimes there can be a little mark that's on one side or the other right where the ring gap is. It'll have some sort of little mark and that will actually tell you up or down with this uh, piston ring. But to do this, you want to take your ring you want to get it inside the cylinder and take your piston, push it down. This will make sure that it's a flat surface in there. And then right where this ring gap is right here, you want to take a feeler gauge and you want to see what the clearance is. Here's my feeler gauges here. This is basically a bunch of different thicknesses of steel. It's down to the thousandths. And you basically want to start somewhere and see if you can put this feel of gauge in there. It looks like I can. So we'll do one up. 18 or 18 fits. We got it on our little jump for two, 17 thousandths. So now that we know it's 17 thousandths, now we can look at our clearance sheet to see if this is within tolerance for this ring. So that first ring's clearance was way out of spec. I tried a second ring and it was better, but it was still on spec. So I'm going to be talking in millimeter terms and what it measured to was 0.38 millimeters and what it needs to be between is 0.13 to 0.28 millimeters. So I don't feel comfortable using these rings in this engine because this is such a crucial clearance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order 30 over piston rings. And when those show up, I'll file them down to get the correct clearances for these 20 over pistons. I'll show you what's entailed next week when they show up. If you enjoy this content, consider giving me a like and maybe subscribe. If you have any questions about anything we went through today, leave it in the comment below and I'll answer it as quickly as possible. Remember, stay dirty, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Well, time to clean up.